What is up, everybody? It is Jake back with the MF Film Room. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things EA College Football, hit that red subscribe button right now. Do it. I'm telling you, hit it right now, okay? You're going to be up to date on everything EA College Football, all the content, all the updates. I'm going to make sure here this is the one-stop shop for anything EA College Football. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitter slash X. And if you're interested in college football, go follow my other channel, Master Football with Jake Posey. But without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, here we are. We are going and continuing on our 12-part series about the EA College Football Features Review. What I want to do, though, again, last week, we went over a couple important things. We went over recruiting. We went over name, image, and likeness, and we went over the transfer portal. Those are all very important things. One thing I want to do, though, is talk about, again, those are more off-the-field kinds of things. More important thing is some things that affect on the field, and that's coach skill trees. So we all remember what coach skill trees are. They're kind of like, the thing about college football, and again, Todd Howard, who is the creator of Skyrim, he's the creator of Starfield, he said one of his most favorite games of all time was NCAA football. One of the reasons why was because your team, especially in dynasty mode, was basically kind of like, it's kind of it's like RPG itself. It's your role playing as the head coach or as of that program. So there's lots of things you have to handle there. So with that, in the same way that you could edit your players, it's kind of like editing your armor or your, your weapons or this or that, you're also going to edit your attributes, which is related to the coach skill trees. I got a video here I made a couple weeks ago on my other channel. I'm bringing it over here to this one because I want to make sure we can go over this because there's a couple things I want to talk about with the coach skill trees, including three things, including the history, the factors to remember when you're talking about this, and then my recommendations. If you guys have any recommendations in terms of what you want for the coach skill trees or what you want to see me make in general, get in the comments right now. But without further ado, let's get into that content. So coaching trees, there's three aspects to them. I'm going to go over and go over kind of the history of them, kind of a shorter history here. I also don't want to break down the factors to consider and then ultimately my recommendations for them going forward. So coaching tree history, I only included NCAA 2014. It was rather simple and it was left a lot to be desired. There were several other years where they had an example where you could have, you know, training, discipline and recruiting three different areas. There was a cool idea like that. I just don't think they had the ability to put it all together at once. Forgot which game that was. And again, if you guys know which game that was, put it in the chat. I really want to understand who that was. But currently in the NCAA 2014, the game that I still play to this day, uh, they have two different groups. They have the head coach and then they have the coordinators for the uh, head coach. They have a couple different things here. You see game management. There's like setup artists, the ability to set up plays. You call a bunch of dives and then there's a play action pass off that. If it's set up, you can really roast the defense. That's at least what the thought process is. Uh, there's a couple other other ones there. So you see anti-freeze. If you have that, if you have it fully uh, done up, that means that you cannot freeze the uh, your kicker whenever somebody calls a timeout to ice them. There's also the recruiting aspect. So the recruiting aspect, you see the picture below there where it talks about, okay, the locksmith. You're going to lock up. Some players will lock you out because, you know, they're too far behind or they're just not interested in your stuff. You can go ahead and unlock them and have them become available to you. That's one thing. Then there's the scouting right next to that. Then there's, you know, how many points extra per visit do you get? How many points extra per week do you have? How many... Uh, uh, you know, players do you have to have in a state for it to be a pipeline? A couple different aspects within there. And then you see the coordinator side too. The coordinator side is offense, defense, and it's direct abilities. Plus uh, one to this ability, plus two to this ability, plus one to catch, plus two to interception, plus three to tackling, plus four to break tackle, things like that across the board. Pretty simple there. And then the coaching tree history in Madden 22. So I want to go ahead and bring up these. There's a couple different trees here. So you see across the top there, they have four. They have head coach. Offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and player personnel. Offensive and defensive coordinator kind of operate the same way as the NCAA 2014. I actually like that where you can really, if you have a really good offensive coordinator, it affects their direct abilities on the field. Head coaches have a different perspective. So on this game, the head coach focuses on training bonuses. So you can see they're on the right for secret remedy, increase experience gained by free safeties and strong safeties by 10%. And again, that's a week to week basis because that's how Madden really does their scouting, or excuse me, does their training. So you also see the personnel tree below there. So you see the fact that it says smooth talker, reduce the cost of trading up during the draft. So again, there's a couple different things you can go with that. That does not necessarily apply to uh, NCAA or EA college football because there's no draft. But uh, again, the player personnel, and again, you could have a recruiting coordinator or things like that. But this right here, this tree focuses on drafting and scouting in free agency. So breaking that down, there are four factors I believe to consider on field ratings, uh, recruiting, game management and then development development was one that was included in previous games it wasn't so much included in the recent games for the ncaa franchise the ea college football franchise i hope that it is because i do think that's a big aspect between 
the top flight programs and the lower programs is your ability to develop players versus just recruit some of them. Some do a great job recruiting, others do a great job of developing. It all depends on who you are. So on field ratings, there's a couple different things. I do think they have this pretty well understood. I am going to foreshadow for this for the future. I don't have a lot of suggestions for the coordinators, but you see here offense would adjust their stamina, injury, their blocking, catching, throwing, running. Defense would be stamina, injury, tackling, covering, and pursuit. You could possibly do a couple of things there with you know how you like to orchestrate them. Are you this type of a offense? Are you that type of an offense? You could do something like that. But for the most part, that's what the factors you need to consider there. I also think a special teams, dude, kicking, punting, coverage, blocking, something like that needs to be considered in there. Again, I think we're adding more and more complexity to this, but I do think it's important to make sure you have that in there because uh, you know, that's a factor of the game that needs to be discussed about on-field team ratings. Then we have recruiting. So recruiting, there's a couple different aspects. So there's scouting. So the scouting athletic ability. So if you ever see a spark rating or something like that, that's somebody's what they've done at, you know, certain, you know, training courses or things like that. You also see football abilities. Those are a little bit more subjective. Again, it becomes objective when you see them on the field, uh, but those are a little bit more subjective in real life. And then you see their different position abilities. So you'll see that how the recruiting of athletes at NCAA 2014, it was kind of all over the place. You kind of had to see, oh, is this person this, is this person that? The computer might say, yeah, they're, they're in line to be an offensive lineman, but then they show up and they're actually a better defensive lineman. Happens all the time. Uh, also in recruiting, there's week-to-week -week contact. So usually done in a call or points assignment. And again, I discussed that but before. I want it to be a points assignment. But the week-to-week -week contact, so that is something that, that coaches directly do and do have an impact on. Is it going to be the offensive coordinator going to call them? Is the position coach? Is the head coach going to call them? That's how it kind of breaks down. Not just the head coach is involved in recruiting. Also in recruiting, there are certain uh, positions that are, are strengths or weaknesses of recruiting per coach and per team. So I know the, the game had something called play style, which could affect your ability to attract certain recruits. But as an example, Mario Cristobal was one of the best offensive line recruiters when he was at Oregon. Everybody remembers Panay Sewell when he went there. He does a really good job. And actually the fact that he's got a lot of people in Miami excited because he does such a good job of recruiting offensive linemen. You also see their ability to offer scholarships, their ability to offer promises, uh, what kind of visits they want to take people on, and then what are the pipelines. Those are the aspects of uh, head coach uh, and their ability to recruit in games and during the offseason in real life. We also have game management. So game management is a couple different things. So from the head coach's perspective, I do think that the uh, the abilities needs to be uh, you know adjusted by the coordinators. But head coaches are in charge of a composure, strategy, and then obviously timeout, you know, bonuses or things like that. So uh, composure, you know, preventing icing on kicks, recovering from getting cold if players are you know kind of worn out, calling a timeout to rally the troops, starting off hot and big rivalry games. They have several of these those things in the game right now. You also see the strategy for like setup plays, uh, you know, team aggression levels, avoiding penalties, playing extra aggressive, and Coach Stradamus. Coach Stradamus was pretty cool because he literally would tell you there's a 50% a chance they're going to call this coverage. There's a 50% chance they're going to call this play right here. I actually think they need to build off of that because that's what happens with scouting. You can say, oh, well, this, this team really likes this play in this situation. That happens all the time. And then timeout bonuses, regaining composure, kind of feeds into that composure aspect, but there needs to be some sort of timeout bonuses for the game. And then breaking down the aspects to consider for development. So there's training. There's not only in season, but there's off season. There's spring football, summer workouts. There's also week to week recovery. I think that Madden has a pretty good understanding of how this is going to work. However, it kind of changes because in in Madden, the, the emphasis is the in season recruiting or in season development versus off season. So I, they'd have to adjust that to that, but I want to make sure that the week to week recovery could be a development aspect in the game in a coaching tree. All right, and finally, my recommendations here. So on field team ratings, I don't want to touch that very much. I think that they've done a good job in both Madden and in NCA. Again, there could be some improvements, but I think relatively their you know, blocking ability, running ability, this ability, that ability, those need to be adjusted by the coordinators. Totally fine with that. For recruiting, and again, that's going to be a little bit different here. So I think that first thing I need to do is, is full scouting needs to be throttled down. Full scouting was completely overpowered. I don't care what anybody says, but it says right here, you could possibly work like Madden scouting where you assign a regional scout to come back with you with breakdowns of players. But like I said before, I think that certain players' athletic abilities need to be understood. I mean, if there's some of those five-star players that they've been through five spark camps, three on-field you know, events, people know how fast they are before they get there. But how well they are at doing certain plays, you know, how well they are at certain, you know, activities in the game, that could be more subjective depending upon the coach. 
Uh, also in recruiting, you need to be able to flip hard commit players. This happens all the time. It's not exactly 100%, but it happens. There's been plenty of examples, and you and, all, you and I both know the difference between a soft verbal and a hard verbal. Those players can still be plucked. I think that a good coach has the ability to do that and flip those players. You should also have the strengths and weaknesses of recruiting certain positions. Like I said before, play style factors into it a bit, but it could be more like bad and skill trees of recruiting new players and retaining current ones. So preventing players from going to the transfer portal, attracting players to transfer to you, uh, attracting players to commit to you, so on and so forth. I think that that's a really, really important thing that factors into real life that they need to add to the game. Next up is the game management tree. So the game management tree needs to be throttled up. Okay. Whereas scouting and, and recruiting needs to be throttled down because it was so overpowered as a tree. Uh, the recruiting tree was OP in NCAA 2014. Absolutely. If you didn't put any points into game management, you would dust a whole bunch of teams because your team would be so much better. Coach Stradamus needs to come back and be more powerful. Like I said, it needs to be, you do have a lot of scouting aspects in college football that needs to be more powerful and needs to be reflective more of those team, go, those games that you see. You'll see the certain games where it'll be like, God, how is this team sticking with this other team? They scouted them really well and they know what they do. A uh, set of plays need to actually work. I don't even want to talk about that. Set of plays suck. Uh, ice the kicker needs to be harder to obtain. And again, I think that it could be possibly a you know special teams coordinator position or something like that. But uh, ice the kicker is, it's really easy to ice kickers in college. The kickers aren't nearly as good as you would think. So you need to be able to ice the kicker. And then you should be able to include which penalties are less likely to commit. There was one aspect of NCAA 2014 where you're able to, you know, say, oh, well, they're less likely to commit certain penalties or to commit all penalties. You could actually have it to be, okay, well, I want this to be like an aggressive tree to go down or a discipline tree to go down. So less penalties, more penalties, you know, but bigger plays, let, you know, not as many big plays, something like that to make it more, more worthwhile and more representative of the type of coaching team. Because some teams are really disciplined and some teams are not. And then lastly here, I have a development. So I want a strength and conditioning coach or a development tree of the coach. I don't know if, you know, I don't know how, if it has to be a separate coach or if it can just be part of the head coach or whatever, but I need it to be a thing. Okay. I want there to be three areas to be able to improve your team throughout training. Uh, it should be stronger at bigger programs and not cookie cutter across the board. Like, I mean, it doesn't just mean everybody goes up four or five. If the bigger teams can go up more often than the smaller teams. They have more resources. They have better facilities. They have better players, uh, things like that. Within those three areas, it needs to be week to week in season. It should not be the main focus like Madden. Uh, off season is when the college players make their biggest jumps. Again, that's when they're they're bulking up. I know there's if you go on to it and you'll see the fact that like, you know, Marcus Davenport played for UTSA. I actually played as UTSA. He was 6'6", 215 as a sophomore. And when he was uh, drafted, he was in the 270s. That development happens in the off season. It happens a lot in the, uh, the cafeteria. But again, that's where they build up a lot of that ability. Uh, also, spring football, that's important for skills and athleticism-based improvements. And then the off-season workouts needs to be athleticism-based work uh, improvements as well. Could be small, could be marginal. You're not going to get exponentially better during the off-season, but you are going to be focused and ready to go for the next season. And then week-to-week -week recovery dependent upon strength and conditioning coaches or development tree abilities, basically meaning that you know, however good your coach is at that, that's how it should affect them and their, their ability to recover from games, playing on short weeks, and so on and so forth. All right, so that's what I got, man. What are your guys' recommendations? What do you want to see in the game? What do you not want to see in the game? Do you like my ideas? Do you think my ideas are crap? Get in the comments right now. Let me know. Also, follow me on Facebook, IG, and Twitter. Links are in the description. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Like I said, on Monday, we're going to be going over offense. And then when next Wednesday, we're going to go over some defensive stuff that I have an idea for. But like I said, get in the comments. Let me know what you think. But beyond that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am out.